Greetings everyone, welcome back to Lamex FX. Today, we finally get on a boat and leave Besaid. But first, like and share with someone who will be interested in using the Bible to interpret Final Fantasy X. Now, let us begin. All right, we are at the long awaited time, the time we can get the story on the road or at sea, so to speak. Anyway, this is a very sad scene for anyone who knows how the story is supposed to go. That is why everyone here is giving us gifts, which we need. Also, the next scenes will help us to understand how each character interacts with the world. So let's get on with it. Goodbye. For those of you who do not know, the Japanese don't use the word for goodbye often because goodbye has a meaning of until another turn of life, maybe. In other words, I may never see you again. I won't tell you why this is important, but basically Yuna is saying she may never see any of them again. Anyway, since we're on this topic, I need to talk about Yuna's pilgrimage. Waka said that she has to take a pilgrimage to go pray at every temple in Spira, right? This is a practice from Catholicism called the Pilgrimage of Seven Churches. It is a practice to take a pilgrimage to the seven churches, obviously, and pray at each of them. Just like Yuna must take a pilgrimage to every church in Spira. Not counting anima, there are seven aeons to obtain. Again, not counting anima because she is new and no one knows about her. Also, there is a country, an island country, where the same practice is called Iglesia Visita, or for Spanish, the visiting, ch visiting churches, basically. So it's an island country that speaks Spanish. In any case, let's continue. Come to think of it, I haven't told you where we're going. First to Kilika Island. Then we change boats and head for Luca. For that though, Yuna's gotta pray at the temple. I'll be guarding. We'll be praying for the Aurochs victory too, so you come along, yeah? <sighs> great plan. Hey, it is a great plan. Don't look at me. Okay, so Walker just confirmed what I said about Yuna's pilgrimage, but I must talk about him and Lulu. Firstly, I cannot stand Lulu. Why is she always so degrading? And Waka, Waka is weak. He, he has a strange aura about him called happy wife, happy life, but the Bible says differently. It says, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. In short, Waka needs to tell her to shut her mouth. But anyway, let's go below the ship. Ooh, them fascinating clothes you're wearing. Yeah! Filthy, filthy. These won't sell. All me names, not a walker. Don't look like you got much money either. 
I've no business with you. Out of me way. Who do you think you are? Awaka the 23rd. Merchant extraordinaire. Awaka the who? Don't know me? Well, not many do. Not yet. So, this is Awaka the 23rd. Merchant extraordinaire. Now, something I must talk about is that Awaka recognized that Titus wears clothes that are not common to Spirit. This will be interesting later when we talk about how Waka doesn't believe that Titus is from somewhere else. But right now, I want to talk about his attitude. He first meets us and insults us. This is no good for a man trying to become a merchant, especially a merchant extraordinaire, because people like to buy from people they like. He must try to be a friend before trying to be a merchant. And... Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 a man that hath friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother uh, yes this is the scripture I was talking about before when I said Titus was friendly to Waka but also O Waka must show himself friendly to me if he wants me to be a customer and or investor but I will show myself friendly to him by giving him money to invest in his business but someday, the name of Walker will be spoken all over Spira. Say, lad, you wouldn't have a bit of gill to lend. Now, I have to explain something about giving money. Firstly, don't give what you cannot spare. If you think you'll need potions, don't just give Awaka money for free. Buy those potions. Ecclesiasticus chapter 29, verse 20. Help thy neighbor according to thy power. And beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. Basically, only give what you can or else you're going to be poor like the person himself is poor. I guess it pays to ask. Thank ye kindly, lad. Fine seed money for the Oaka Merchant Empire. Also, I wouldn't give him money if he was just begging. However, he may not have a normal job, but he is building a business. So technically he is working. Because if he was not working, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. This basically means that if a man on the street with a sign saying, I'm hungry, please give me spare change, was seen, I wouldn't give him a thing. And before thou say, I mean, before you say, what if that was you, Lamech? Well, it was. I was homeless once, and I remembered this scripture and hung out next to Labor Max until I accumulated enough money to lease an Uber vehicle so I can work better. Because my mindset was this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 40 verse 28. My son, lead not a beggar's life, for better it is to die than to beg. But Awaka is working, so I know that he can pay me back in some way for my kindness. And if not, I'll have helped a man who kept the commandment that said a man should work. So, God will help me. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. Do good to the godly man. And thou wilt find, thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. Basically, I'm supposed to give to someone I know. Why? Because I know he keeps the commandments. I do this knowing my money doesn't just go into a vacuum. But he can repay me. And if not, God will repay me. But do I want verse 3? Yes, I want verse 3. Verse 3. There can no good come... To him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. So it is a commandment to help a godly man and not a sinner. Because no good is going to come to him who is occupied in evil anyway. So if someone's suffering extreme poverty and is hooped up on drugs, helping him is not going to do anything. Helping him is not going to help him out of a situation because helping him doesn't help a sinner. Now, do I want verse 5? Yes. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread, 
and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. You know, I played a game called Divinity once, and there was a man who asked me for money three times. I wish I had read the scripture, but I gave him money thinking about Awaka, thinking, hey, there's a benefit for it, and nothing came of it. Then the dragon told me, hey, if you fell for that three times, there is no helping you. Anyway, the Bible says to hold back your bread. Bread in the Bible, like today, has two meanings. One is money, the other is food. So if a man is a sinner, neither shall he eat. Let him die. Do I want verse 6? Yes, I want verse 6. So, the previous verse says you will receive twice as much evil for all the good you've done to that person. The next verse starts with the word for, meaning it is the reason for verse 5. For the Most High hateth sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day for their punishment. In short, if a man himself doesn't try to kill you or rob you or ask you for more money until you have nothing left to give, then God will punish you because he hates sinners and you're getting in the way of him punishing that sinner. But Owaka's working so I don't have to worry about that and even though he insulted me, Romans chapter 12 verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, Thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Basically, he was rude to me, but if I'm helpful to him now, then he'll feel bad for what he's done and give me a discount. We're making a fortune with Operation Nehem, Tyson. But you, lad, you get a discount. I owe you one, eh? That's right. The Bible teaches you how to play the game. Next. What the heck is that? What the heck is what? What is this place? The power room, like it says on the door. Yeah, but why the big birds? What's so strange about chocobo power? Chocobos? Those are chocobos? What? You've never seen a chocobo? What kind of backwater island did you come from, anyway? Hmm. <sighs> Miracles and oddities were starting to become daily routine on this trip. Okay, I think that's all we can look for down here, except for whatever the Crusaders are doing, but that's not important. So, now we're going to explore what makes Yuna a biblically best girl, and see Kilika get destroyed so I can finally explain what Lucifer is. Next time on Lamex Effects, same time next week.